A word of caution, Lord Sovu. If my time investigating Darth Narl's work has taught me anything, she did not like visitors. I do not fear the dead. I knew the moment you asked me here, you finally understood your limitations. It is no secret. Your role in the hand of the Empire should have gone to me. You are clever, I'll grant you that, but weak. We were never truly equals. Your expertise does have its uses, however. Get on with it. As you wish. you don't. The mouse shows some teeth. Amusing. But look at this. You've saved me so much time, Rivix. Don't do anything foolish. Sovu. We are not equals, but you do have your uses. Hmm. Priority message for Darth Oculus. I found something very interesting. I don't fear the dead, either. Put it down. Of course. Tau Adair, isn't it? I'm not here to talk. What a shame. Perfect timing. Ah, uh, here we go. I've only just arrived, and you're already here to welcome me. Your hospitality is awe-inspiring. 
I didn't want anyone else to get here first and steal you away. Never fear. You are the one I'm here to see, and I come bearing gifts. The kind that once belonged to a certain mysterious Sith we know so little about. This was Darth Nulls. What is it? I have a theory, but that is all it is. A theory. I brought it to you in the hope that you could confirm it. Colonel Gola and Talos Drelik have been hard at work, combing through everything we've found, using the data to pinpoint other locations that may have been under Darth Null's control. But their expertise only reaches so far. You, however, have specialists and resources at your disposal that could identify what we've found. If someone here knew anything about Darth Null, don't you think I would have asked them by now? What about your fascinating hut scientist, Dr. Ogarub? He must have something in his bag of tricks that can tell us anything about this artifact. You would trust something this important to that pretentious hut? I think that now is not the time to leave any stone unturned. Fine, we'll see what he has to say. Lead the way. I am eager to learn what secrets this relic may be hiding. Not now, Sahar. Just try. I know you have it in you. That's not what your precious Jedi said. It's what I'm saying. Found my way without your sorcery. Had to cut my slave collar with this. She gave me a choice: die or fight back. I fought, and I excelled, Sahar. The day I became a Mandalorian, I knew I found my home. I hoped you would find success. You always had fire. I had little choice. Some earn what they have. Some are given everything. And some lose it all. You dare speak to me about suffering? Even the best armor has flaws. Spaces between plates of Beskar steel where blood can be drawn. The events of Runuk have shown me our flaws. I planned for Shevisla to find us. She did. I challenged her and won. Basque's son and his Darmanda have taken their credits and scuttled back to whatever cave spawned them. All as expected. What was unplanned? The gap in our armor is the fear we engineered in our enemy. They brought an entire fleet to rescue poor Shay. Such cowardice in those who call themselves Mandalorians. It cost us what we built on Runok. We bled, but we gained something far more important. Sahar, can you come up here? This one brought me something Taken from the clutches of Darth Malgus. Something so powerful, both the Sith and the Jedi race across the galaxy to claim it. With Sahar's help, we can unlock its secrets. I told you, Hedda. We shouldn't do this. It's not safe. You're right. 
It's never safe to change a galaxy. Never easy to fight corruption and hypocrisy. But your brother said you would face anything to restore balance. Each of you will gather the resources needed to make my vision a reality. You will have your assignments, but none will know the whole plan except myself and Sahar. At long last, we will take back what is ours. I meant to say before, I ran into your old friend when I found Null's relic, Tau Adair. She put up quite a fight. She tries so fiercely to hide her contempt, yet she fails spectacularly. You should have ended her, but I will relish the opportunity to finish what I started on Corellia. I have no doubt you'll get the chance, eventually. I'm certain the Jedi will not rest until she has rescued the wayward Padawan. Over here, I do believe I've found something. Uh, but first, you must tell me more about this containment device you encountered. Uh, what did it look like? How did it work? The intricacies of the device were fascinating. I would be more than happy to go over the details. I knew putting the two of you together was a bad idea. Let's not disparage Dr. Ogarab for being thorough. If you can spare a moment, Lord Rivix, we can speak afterward. Until then, I performed a scan that can identify dormant energy signatures. Even if all that's left is the smallest trace, invisible to instruments you would find in more modest facilities. From the results, I can say with certainty that what you found is the remnant of a lightsaber. But there is more to the story. I was beginning to think no one would ever tell me anything about Darth Null that doesn't lead to more questions. I aim to please. My equipment also found microscopic fragments of the lightsaber's power source. By all indications, the crystal used to construct the weapon originated in the Adika system. That is curious. Before recent decades, Sith did not typically use Adegan crystals. They were favored by Jedi in Darth Null's lifetime, if she lived as long ago as we hypothesize. So why did Darth Null have a lightsaber that was built like a Jedi's? A very pertinent question. Hmm. The answer may be more apparent than we think. We know Darth Null created the Children of the Emperor. Perhaps she used the crystals in her method of binding Jedi prey to her master. All we have are pieces of a broken lightsaber. I don't think we should jump to all these conclusions. We may not have reached a conclusion, but I do believe we are finally heading toward one. This might be the time to speak to Malgus again. You can ask about the interesting discoveries we've made here today. He will say nothing. I would rather continue our own investigations without the unhelpful detours to Malgus's cage. Your frustration is understandable, but this situation presents a unique opportunity. We possess information that Malgus may not have himself. We should press our advantage. All right. While we wait for more intel to come in, I'll see Malgus. I do not envy you having to attempt any sort of communication with that ill-tempered brute. If we're finished here, I have places to be. Dr. Ogorob's findings provide crucial insight into what Malgus was planning. Focusing on Darth Null's work that affected minds was an important clue. But the fact Null used both Sith and Jedi techniques was completely unexpected. Though I am at a loss as to why Malgus would want anything to do with someone who had ties to the Jedi. And let's not forget Darth Null's holocron falling into the hands of Heta Kol. 
Do we know what's on there? We don't, but we need to assume that whoever holds that holocron holds the advantage. Malgus has the information we need, but he isn't talking. We're not running blind, however. What we learned about Darth Null's Jedi influence does give us something to go on, though admittedly not much. Looks like we have a visitor. Tell these droids to get out of my way! I need to speak to Malgus! They answer only to the Empress and cannot be overridden, Shay. Some higher-up is all sweaty about my past contracts with Malgus. They've got no understanding of how those things work. It's not like Malgus and I are pals. I was hired to do a job, and I did it. Perhaps. But permission to interrogate the prisoner is restricted to a select few. I'm going to find out if he's working with Hedda, with or without permission. Don't take this any further. Funny. I was thinking the same thing. Runic showed me who you are, but that doesn't matter right now. We both need this. So, what's it gonna be? You're not going in there. That's final. Think about it. I'm the only one here who knows him. I get how he thinks, how he twists everything around, what's really important to him. I can make this happen. This does not solve the issue those droids have with Shay. Then put me on comms. Comms? To listen in? I don't like it. Any contact with Malgus is dangerous. You're right, but I survived by his side longer than most. If you listen to me, we can trip him up. This is a terrible risk, but time is short. We need something new to provoke Malgus. We'll be in full control. If anything seems out of place, we shut it all down. The moment you cease being useful, you're cut off. Is that clear? She doesn't move from this spot. are useless against Malgus. He fears nothing. You keep talking about putting an end to what he wants, and we'll get nowhere. Make him think you understand. That's the key to getting anything out of him. Still sitting on the throne of defeat. I told you he won't respond to that. Get him to think you're on his side. If you continue this behavior, your time here will be unpleasant. You're losing our only chance to ask about Hedda. I've had enough of your games. Tell me something I can use, or face the consequences. There is nothing you can do that I haven't already suffered tenfold by my own ignorance. The Emperor kept our kind distracted with petty squabbles, while he hoarded true power. The Jedi are no better, caging the Force within those few they deem worthy. I will tear apart the corrupt systems that allow weakness to infect the galaxy. I will stop the rot. I will burn down all of their failing legacies and see who embraces the flame. More of his mystical Osik. What about the Holocron? Does Hedda have something she can use against my people? Who whispers in your ear? Shave, Vizma. 
Your thoughts are plain to me, Mandalore the Avenger. Your rage consumes you. There was a battle, and your prey slipped through your fingers. Your people are divided, while Heta Kull gathers her army. You are right to come begging for answers. Heta will destroy you. Where is she? Dindila Hutun, answer me! looms over us all, a shadow of unchanging history. There are fools who believe they can outrun the shadow. Without a flame to chase it away, it will consume them. They are doomed to repeat the same failures. None who have stood by my side have understood this. The only one who could have is my enemy. A shame that you and I must remain that way. You are everything wrong with Sith. You preach about strength, yet here you are, imprisoned by your own insolence. something of me. I understand that this is one request out of many, but the circumstances are unique. I have been summoned by the three. What they had to say has left me disquieted. Meet me at these coordinates on Voss, and I will explain in greater detail. Others have been handling your responsibilities during your little personal visit. I needed you to help identify one of Darth Null's relics, and you were nowhere to be found. I apologize, but I could not have ignored an invitation from the three. Then what you have to say better be important. Your apprehension is understandable, even expected. But this is important. I will await your arrival. We have enough mysteries to contend with without getting the Voss involved. They're not exactly known for being straightforward. Sana Ray sounded unlike herself. I do hope whatever she has to tell you isn't too troubling. You have arrived. Good. I have been waiting to show you this. When we first uncovered the existence of Darth Null, I could not imagine that tracing the origins of one of her relics would lead here. The members of the Force Enclave that we sent to the planet in wild space. I never regained contact with them. Except for one final message that contained their findings. The man who sent it to me was... changed. No doubt by what they endured, and by what they found, what you are about to see. Darth Null possessed a talent that was unique among her kind. 
Through the Force, she could connect her mind to another's. Darth Null could speak to someone's most hidden desires. Reach depths of their thoughts they could not reach themselves. Over great distances, she could mentally bond with anyone who could feel the Force. In those who did not recognize their own abilities, she awakened that realization. She was looked down upon for this by those who believed she shared power with the unworthy. She could find no favor among her kind. Darth Null took those who would follow her to an empty world in wild space, where they could do as they pleased, without judgment. Null taught her disciples how to forge mental bonds as she did. They called out to others and invited them to their sanctuary. But eventually, Null made a connection with someone she did not intend. A being of dark malevolence, the Sith Emperor. He hunted her down, using her own power against her. Before the Emperor could reach her followers, Null locked many of their secrets away in the ruins my team discovered. Null and the others fought back against their captors, but their fate was sealed. The Emperor dominated the minds of her disciples, bent them to his will, enslaved them. After that day, Null's followers became servants of the Emperor, and she became Darth Null. Why did someone as powerful as the Emperor take interest in such an outsider? Many reasons. The Emperor was always searching for methods to increase his power, to expand his armies, and Null could provide them. And if the Jedi learned that someone they had expelled from their order was building the Emperor's weapons, that would have been a powerful blow. Relinquishing their greatest resources to the enemy, all in the name of some meaningless code. Not much has changed for the Jedi. I do not have much to say about how the Jedi conduct themselves. Voss also live by rules that many outsiders consider inflexible. The account of Darth Null's removal from the Jedi is told from her own perspective. We do not know much about what transpired before that, other than what she was called. Master Renaya. Malgus knows about Master Renaya. And everything else about Darth Null's past, I'm sure of it. We're chasing shadows and making fools out of ourselves. But now the truth has come to light. If Malgus wanted to hide it forever, he failed. All that you found about Darth Null. Why did I have to come to Voss to hear it? After I heeded the Three's request to return to Voss, I heard whisperings. Rumors of a vision that caused great concern among the mystics. The Three forbade them to speak about what was seen. A revelation centered on Darth Malgus. I'm not beholden to these irrational fanatics. They will tell me what was in this vision. It will not be as simple as that. The Three know well the value you would place on hearing the details of this vision. But they would never share them with an outsider even one of your status, unless you gave them a reason to. Malgus's plans could mean the end of the galaxy as we know it. What more of a reason do they need? Perhaps they think there is nothing in this vision that would help you. However, you have the opportunity to convince them otherwise. Despite our best efforts, some of our most sacred temples have yet to be rebuilt in the years since Valen's assault. The Shrine of Contemplation is too deep within Gormak lands. The work is slow, even with aid from the few Gormak who have chosen to continue their alliance with the Voss. The three are overseeing progress at the Shrine of Contemplation now. If you were to approach them and offer your assistance, perhaps you will change their minds about the vision. With luck, they will be receptive to one with your gracious reputation. If I get the slightest sense that the three will not cooperate with me, I will leave. A fair proposition. 
Here are the coordinates for the Shrine of Contemplation. I will send a message ahead to the commandos there to expect your arrival. It is time. The three have asked you to appear before them. Despite your decisions, they are eager to speak with you. They are waiting for you now. I'm getting the sense that the three aren't happy with you. It is not that. There are... unresolved questions. What are you talking about? When the Eternal Empire threatened the galaxy, my presence in your alliance was understandable, but much has changed. The Outsiders' wars no longer concern Voss. We have our own struggles. The three want to know why I do not return and continue my duties as a mystic. After I joined the Alliance, I no longer had access to interpreters who could derive meaning from my visions for the first time. My actions were determined by my own decisions and a Voss who chooses to remain with outsiders is a Voss who is forever looked upon with doubt. Your place won't always be guaranteed. If something happens, don't blame me when the Voss won't take you back. The choices I have made are mine, and I do not regret them. I seek a greater purpose, beyond what I found as a mystic. I still have much to do before I find it. But there is no better person to learn from than you. I've kept you too long. The three will be wondering what has delayed you. Outsider, do you understand the importance of this meeting? We really don't need all the fanfare and ceremony. Just give me the information I need. We go against our own beliefs to share knowledge with you. You should acknowledge that sacrifice. There has been a vision. Its contents are disturbing. Life will be reshaped, scales unbalanced. A wave of change rises and falls beyond the reach of Darth Malgus. And as he dreams, he awakens a great power, one that will tear the galaxy apart. He can't do that if I kill him. We possess few details about this vision, but there is one thing we are certain of. Should Darth Malgus perish, this catastrophe will transpire more quickly. There's something you're not telling me. We have no reason to lie. Then what can I do? Why tell me any of this? You are familiar with the visions experienced by our mystics. The role these prophecies play? I don't listen to prophecies. I make my own way. That is what concerns us. The mystics experience visions, the unfailing beacons of truth our people follow. And from these revelations, the interpreters show us the path. 
the decisions we must make to preserve our home, our way of life. But in this vision, we see no outcome. There is nothing to guide us. The interpreters are united in its meaning. The three. The Voss. We can do nothing. We are powerless. This shrouded prophecy will come to pass. The foundations will be shaken. The pillars raised. The chaos is unavoidable. But whatever is to come from this, it is you who will choose the fate of us all. Our destiny is in the hands of an outsider. Do you see why we shield our people from this? I'm tired of being responsible for the consequences of every decision. You can fight against destiny, but it is inescapable. Whatever part you play in this, enemy or ally, none of it will happen without you. You must be ready. We will be waiting. <laughs>